the mind has a basic habit, which is to create things. In fact, when the Buddha describes causality, how things come about, he says the power of creation is what they call sankara, the ability of the mind or the tendency of the mind to put things together. That actually comes prior to our sensory experience. It's because the mind is active that it knows things. Now the problem is most of its actions, most of its creations come out of ignorance, and so the kind of knowledge that comes that way can be misleading. So what we want to do in the process of meditation is to back up, to get down as close to this process of creation as we can, to see if there's a way to do it skillfully that leads to knowledge, that can break through ignorance. And so that means instead of building up a lot of things, it means letting things fall apart so we can get down to exactly where are these basic forces in the mind that are putting things together. And when we bring the mind to the breath, we've got all the basic forces right here and their most elemental forms. The breath is the factor that fashions the body. That's what they call gaya sankara, or the physical putting together. The word sankara literally means putting together. It's the breath that puts life together in the body. If there weren't for the breath here, then things would start falling apart really fast. And then there are verbal sankaras, which is the tendency of the mind to put things in words. And the two basic factors there are directed thought and evaluation. And you've got those here, too. You direct your thoughts to the breath, and then you evaluate the breath. How does the breath feel? Does it feel good? Okay, stay with it. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. This is about the most basic level of conversation you can have with yourself. Does this feel good or not? Comfortable or not? Yes, no. And then you work with that. And what are you working with? You're working with mental fabrication, which is feeling and perception. Feelings of pleasure and pain, neither pleasure nor pain. And then perception is the labels that the mind gives to things. This is this, and that is that. And when you've got the mind with the breath, you've got all of these things brought together. They're the feelings that come from the breath, they're the perceptions. Okay, now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out, now the mind is like this, now the mind is like that. And the directed thought and evaluation are there as well. So it's all together. If you stray away from here, you're usually straying away into the realm of further elaboration, in which you lose this basic frame of reference and you create a whole other one. That's what they call becoming in the text, when you create these other worlds in the mind. Once you get in those other worlds, you lose touch with the process of creation, how becoming is brought together. So you've got to learn how to take those things apart. The Buddha talks about various ways of dealing with distraction here. One, simply realize that you've left your original frame of reference and you just bring yourself back. In other words, you remind yourself. In some cases, the act of reminding <coughs> is enough to disperse that other little world that you've created for yourself and come back to this one. Other times, you have to reflect actively on the drawbacks of that other world, that other kind of thinking, especially if it's thinking that's imbued with lust, aversion, delusion, harmfulness. You've got to remind yourself, what, hap what would happen if I thought about this for a while? Well, you'd create certain habits in the mind, and once those habits are in the mind, then they lead to actions, which can create all kinds of problems. So once you see the drawbacks of that kind of thinking, you say, I don't need that. I've had enough of that in my life. Okay, drop it and come back. Other times, you consciously ignore the distraction. There's this little world in your mind, and you say, I don't want to enter into that, but it, for some reason, just doesn't go away. You realize the reason it's not going away is because you're paying attention to it. Even if you don't like it, paying attention to it is often enough to keep these things going. Kind of like a tar baby. Once you try to pull yourself off with one hand, well, you get both hands stuck. Pull yourself off with your foot, your foot gets stuck. 
bite the tar baby, your mouth gets stuck. So the only way to deal with it is to not feed it. In other words, don't pay attention to it. You know it's there, but you just don't give it any mind. And after a while, from lack of attention, it just dies out. A fourth way of pulling yourself back is to notice how when there is this process of creation, these little worlds that you create in your mind, there's a certain element of tension that goes with it. And it's a lot easier not to create. You just relax whatever the tension there is. It's kind of a physical and mental tension around these things. Once you can locate it, just relax it. That'll be done with it. A fifth way, when none of these other methods work, is just to say, okay, I'm going to clench my teeth, press my tongue against the palate, and I will not think about that other thing. In other words, just through the force of your will, you force it out of your mind. That's the method of last resort, and it's the one that sort of the least precise and lasts only as long as your willpower lasts. But sometimes it's needed just to clear the air a little bit. So whenever these other little worlds get created in your mind, you pull yourself back to these very basic levels of the process of creation in the mind. The breath, directed thought, evaluation, feelings, perceptions. Stay right on this level. Now the question is, what do you do with them on this level? Well, you can create levels of concentration in the mind. It's a different, It's again, it's a kind of creation, but it's a creation that instead of obscuring the process of what's going on in the mind, actually makes it clearer. You don't leave these basic levels of your frame of reference. In other words, you put them to use in a new way. Like you put feelings to use in a new way. You learn how to create a feeling of pleasure through the breath. So the pleasure gets more and more intense, more and more solid. More, just the act, the act of sitting here breathing gets really refreshing. And it doesn't pull you off into another world. You stay right here. feels good right here. So instead of just feeding on the pleasure in a nameless way. You do it in a systematic way. What way can you keep the mind with a sense of pleasure, a sense of rapture, and it doesn't wander off? That's what the concentration is all about. As it strengthens the mind, it gives the mind direction. And it takes its desire for pleasure and it puts it to, prop to a, a good use. Once the mind feels comfortable in the present moment, it's not going to wander off anyplace else. It feels good right here. A lot of more satisfaction comes from this sense of ease that's right here than little bits and pieces of satisfaction that come from the, the worlds that you can create with your mind. Again, this is a process of creation, but it's a lot more skillful than normal. It keeps things on a basic level where you're really in touch with this process. Don't lose sight of it. It's like the difference between sitting out in an audience and watching a play and being behind the stages in the play. Behind the stage you see both the actual play, but you also see what goes on behind it. And that way it's, it's a lot less likely to get carried away by the illusion of the play. And then, of course, pain is going to come as well. Sometimes it's out-and-out out pain that you're dealing with at the beginning of the meditation. Other times it's more subtle. But again, pleasure and pain, instead of just feeling that you're on the receiving end of these things, you start putting them to use. The pain is there to comprehend. That's what the Buddha said is his teachings on the Four Noble Truths. The task with regard to pain is to comprehend the pain. And once the mind is solid enough and stable enough so it doesn't feel threatened by the pain, it can analyze the pain on whatever level it may be, out-and-out out pain or just more subtle stress. And you start finding that you understand the mind a lot better. All the little animals in the mind that tend to gather around pain, you begin to notice who they are and what they are, and you realize it's not me. It's just these thoughts tend to cluster around pain. And if you want to identify them with them, you can, but it's going to create a lot more pain. 
and so you learn how to let them go. Even when you're in the state of concentration, you'll find that as you get more and more sensitive to it, there's a subtle level of stress with each level. And once you identify where that stress is and you let it go, you go to a more subtle level of concentration. Then you stay there for a while. In the beginning, you don't notice the stress in the new level. Like we're saying today, it's like going into a bright room where your eyes haven't yet adjusted to the light. But if you stay there for long enough, your eyes begin to adjust and begin to notice, oh, there are shapes, there are forms, there are things in this room that you can see. It's the same as you go from one level of concentration to the next. You notice that, say, when you leave directed thought and evaluation, you notice this, this is stressful here. Once the breath really feels full, really feels satisfying, you don't need to keep evaluating it. You don't have to keep reminding yourself to stay with it. You're just there, 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 there with a basic perception. You let go of the directed thought and evaluation, bang, you come down to a much deeper level. Then you go through this step by step. Then you realize how important, what an important role perception plays in this. The label that you put on things. You're constantly labeling the breath. And then you begin to label a sense of space that comes, a sense of knowing that comes. As you go through the levels of concentration, all the way up to the, the sphere of nothingness, that still is a what they call a perception attainment. It's based on the label that the mind puts on that experience that keeps you there. So again, you're with these very basic, basic levels of creation in the mind. And when you start taking those apart, that's when things really get interesting. Because you. Instead of building, building, building up, you're letting go, letting go, letting go, bit by bit by bit. And then, of course, you're getting attached to the new level you reach, but it's a good attachment. Because otherwise, you go floating off to other worlds. And this one at least keeps you in the present moment, where things can begin to open up. Then again, you apply that, the teachings from the Four Noble Truths. Again, keep it basic. Where is there stress here? Instead of elaborating on it, and especially when you get to the level of infinitude of consciousness, or the infinitude of space, you have a real sense, okay, you've reached the level from which all things come and to which all things return, and you can really start philosophizing on that, and getting involved in all kinds of abstractions about the relationship of the absolute and the relative and the emanation and emanation and all these other things. But they're really irrelevant to what the real problem in the mind is, that there's still stress there. And if you're stuck there, you haven't gone beyond. You haven't really reached the deathless. So you've got to just ask that same old basic question, where is there stress here? Look for it. See what you're doing that keeps the stress going, and then let go. Ultimately, you open up to something that is totally unfabricated. So instead of building things up, you do build up the practice. You are building states of concentration in the mind. You see this very clearly as you go from one level to the next. But it's a level of fabrication that keeps you within this frame of reference, the very absolute present. It doesn't distract you into other levels where you lose touch with this process of fabrication. This is a basic pattern in all the, the Buddhist teachings. That the things that you have to learn how to let go, well, first you have to learn how to do them skillfully mindfully, with awareness. And it's through the doing that you get to know them. That's that basic principle we talked about earlier. We wouldn't know anything. There would be no awareness at all if there weren't any doing in the mind. It's just learning how to do things more and more and more skillfully to finally you can get to a level where the mind just stops doing. And it opens up to a totally different kind of awareness. So you make use of what you've got. And the Buddha noticed that all things fabricated or have an element of stress. But what are you going to do? How are you going to get to the unfabricated? You can't use the unfabricated as a tool because then that would be fabricating it, and that's not its nature. You learn how to use the process of fabrication of the mind then in a more skillful way. Like when he divides things up into the Four Noble Truths. There's stress, and there's the 
origination of stress, and there's a cessation of stress in the path. Now, what he does for the path is he takes things that are stressful, this process of creation, but he teaches it has to use it in a, in a skillful way. So you use fabrication to undo fabrication. And then finally reach the point where everything opens up to the unfabricated. It's an extremely skillful path, skillful approach. But it takes the raw materials that we've got right around us all the time, the things with, that we ordinarily use to create things. It's just we learn how to use them in a more skillful way, getting down to basics, keeping away from abstractions. Once there's an abstraction in the mind, it, you know, there's a new level of being in there, there's a new level of new frame of reference that pulls you away from the present. A lot of self-delusion comes through abstraction, a lot of opportunity for lying to yourself comes through abstraction. So we keep things basic, we keep our nose to the ground. Just look at the basic things we have, this physical, verbal, metal fabrication, learning how to put them into the proper use, use them more and more skillfully, get more and more in touch with the actual process of fabrication right here in the present moment. That's where things open up. <laughs>